All right, in this video, we're going to talk about special pairs of angles. Uh, we're going to talk about adjacent, linear pair, and vertical. There's a couple more um, supplementary and complementary, but we'll talk about that in another video. There's enough here to cover 10 minutes worth of stuff for sure. So the first one we're going to talk about is adjacent angles. And I'll give you the definition, uh, but it's really a lot easier just to see it. So two angles in a plane that share a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. And I like to say that they're right beside each other. So what this would be, would be a, if you drew a straight line and then intersected the two lines, and you would form adjacent angles. So here's your common vertex, here's your common side, and so this angle and this angle would be adjacent. Okay, so, so some things that maybe are not adjacent. Uh, so if you drew two angles that were beside each other, those are not adjacent, even though they're beside each other, because they don't share a common vertex. You notice we have two vertices and we have two sides. So those are not adjacent. Um, some others, uh, if you drew uh, those two intersecting lines again <clears throat> and these two are adjacent but what about this one and this one well they share a common vertex but they don't share a common side so those are something different and that's we'll get that to that next those are vertical angles so adjacents have to be right beside each other so these are adjacent um, you know, these two blue ones are adjacent. I'll just keep going around. These green ones are adjacent. They're right beside each other and on around. So you have several pairs of adjacent angles there. So that's adjacent. Vertical angles, um, I just showed you that with the red angles previously, but vertical angles are two angles such that the side of one angle are opposite rays to the sides of another angle. Um, I like to say that they're across from each other. And there's also a vertical angle theorem, and I'll put the proof at the end of the video so you don't have to watch it, but vertical angles are congruent, unless you do want to watch it. So let's talk about vertical angles. So vertical angles are when you have opposite rays. So here is a set of opposite rays and I'll draw another set of opposite rays so that we have a pair of opposite rays and there's opposite rays so the angles formed by the opposite rays in that case well the angles formed would be this angle and this angle those are vertical angles and what's special about them is they are congruent so we can do it's not a proof, but we can kind of explore that idea a little bit here with uh, this. So notice I have vertical angles marked. They're 38.89 degrees. And if we, uh, this is probably not going to let me do that. So if we change this angle over, notice that no matter how we change it, they're still vertical. They're always congruent. So we can change that however we want to, and vertical angles remain congruent. So that's uh, kind of uh, an inductive way of looking at it. It's not a proof, but uh, we'll look at the proof here in a little bit. The last thing I want to talk about then is a linear pair. And a linear pair is formed when two lines intersect forming adjacent angles. So since a line forms a straight angle, and a straight angle is 180 degrees, then linear pairs sum to 180 degrees. So that's kind of a mini proof or a paragraph proof for linear pairs add up to 180 degrees. So what is a linear pair? Again, it's easier to see rather than to read, I think. Our minds process it better if we have a picture. So there's my two intersecting lines. And the adjacents, so this angle and angle, so angle one and angle two, for instance, that forms a linear pair because they add up 
to 180 degrees and their adjacent angles on uh, two intersecting lines. So that's a linear pair. So this one and this one sum up to 180 degrees. And we'll see that in action here in just a little bit. So those are the three definitions. So how are these used in textbooks and, and uh, your math classes? Well, <clears throat> here's a typical problem. We have a situation where we have two intersecting lines. We have this angle here equals the expression 3x plus 5. This angle here is 70 degrees. How can we find the value of x? These are pretty common problems uh, on most uh, most texts, most uh, in college entrance exams, things like that. Um, but let me flash to the next problem and so you can see the difference between the two before we start solving them. <clears throat> so notice all I've done, so here we have a linear pair and here you have vertical angles and maybe I shouldn't have said that yet, give you time to think about these problems. So see if you can solve them both. So here's the first one, here's the second one, um, and go ahead and see, pause the video, see if you can solve these problems. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this one here, and it's, this is a linear pair, so the, this angle here is a straight angle that adds up to 180 degrees, so these two have to sum up to 180. They have to sum up to a straight angle. So in other words, 3x plus 5 plus 70 has to equal 180 degrees. Then you simplify it just like we've always done in algebra. So 3x plus 75 equals 180. Then I'm going to subtract 75 from both sides. And 3x equals 105. Then you would divide by 3, divide by 3, and x has to equal 35. So that's for the set when they're a linear pair. But what about when they're vertical? Again, I would pause the video and solve it if you haven't yet. Try it first. It's good to make mistakes in math. That's how you learn. So in this case, they're vertical, and we know by the vertical angle theorem, we haven't proven it yet, but we will, we know that 3x plus 5 has to equal 70 degrees. So it sets up a little different, and I have a lot of students that just guess at this. They just set everything equal to each other, for instance, or they add up everything and set it equal to 180, for instance, and don't know why they're why we set them equal or why we set them to 180. Well, these are vertical. You have to set them equal. So then to solve this, it's pretty straightforward. So 3x equals uh, 65. Then you divide by 3. And unfortunately, I picked one that doesn't come out even in both cases, but that's OK. So x whoops, is exactly equal to 65 divided by 3, which is 21 and 2 thirds. Or, if you don't like fractions, 21.6 repeating. Or, if you just want to approximate it, it's approximately equal to 21.7. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's, there's a couple common problems with vertical uh, angles and linear pairs. Another common problem is something like this. So we have a lot going on here. I want to find all the rest of the angles in this case. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can find all the missing angles in this thing, and then start it up again, and I'll show you how it's done. So first off, there's lots of ways to do this. You may have done it differently. Uh, I think uh, the easiest way is to pick out my verticals. So I know that this angle and this angle are vertical, because uh, you can see the opposite rays. So here and here are the opposite rays. And so the 40 degrees is right there because our vertical angles are congruent. And then we also know that this angle and this angle are vertical. So this is also 35 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And so all that's left are the two big ones here, the two obtuse angles. And what I would do is to find those, I would use the fact that we have a straight angle here. So F G C is a straight angle. It has to add up to 180 degrees. So we know that 35 plus angle A G B plus 40 has to equal 180. We know when we add those three up, that's equal to 180. So you could add, so we know angle, the measure of angle A G B plus 75 equals 180. And so you subtract 75 and we know that the measure of angle A G B is equal to 180 minus 75, which is 105 degrees. So both of these angles, because they're vertical, are also 105 degrees. So that's another typical problem you'll see. So that's the kind of basic stuff. Um, but let's look at that vertical angle theorem proof. And uh, I try to get kids, this is where I start getting people, anybody that's trying to learn this, into learning proof. Because it is, it's important to understand how to figure this out. Because the stuff I've shown you is not a proof. You know, you can't take somebody's word for it. So the first thing is, let's, we've defined what a vertical angle is. We know vertical angles are congruent. So let's uh, go ahead and draw out vertical angles. So here's a set of opposite rays. I'll put a point there. Here's another set of opposite rays, or a straight line. So, wow, that's a pretty pathetic arrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so then I'm going to just label these. So my verticals would be angle 1 and angle 2 here. I'll label those that way. Then I'm going to label the 1, the adjacent angle to it. I'm going to label that angle 3, just for ease of, of use here. So we're ready. I'm going to do a two-column proof so that we can... I don't know, I just like them. That's how I learned them. So I just, I've always liked two column proofs. And we know since one here and three here are a linear pair, we know they add up to 180 degrees. So we can say for our first step, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. Okay. And the reason for that would be you could say it's a linear pair because I've defined that. Um, we it, you, you can also say it's the angle addition postulate. Um, sorry, I didn't. Whoops, I didn't define that in the video, but uh, that's another thing you could say. Angle addition postulate, and I didn't define postulate. I'm sorry. Um, take a look what that is. Uh, postulate is something that we accept without proof. And so that would be my first step. And if you look at this close enough, you could also see that angle 3 and angle 2 here are also a linear pair. They're also adjacent. So for step 2, I'll go back to black, measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is also equal to 180 degrees, also equal to that straight line. And the reason is the same. They're a linear pair or it's angle addition postulate. However, you'd want to decide to put that in the proof. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> what can we do next? Well, the next thing, if you look at those two, we're kind of done with the picture now. But because if, if you look at this, we have 180 degrees here and 180 degrees here. Well, these both of these parts are equal to 180 degrees. So we could just substitute this in place of the 180 degrees, and we have a new, a new equation. So we know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 has to be the same as the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And that's by substitution. I just substituted 
one expression in for 180. Substitution. Just substituting equal parts. Equal expressions. All right. So now we can just do some common algebra to this. Well, we know that the measure of angle 3 is always going to be the same. You know, when, once you define a variable, which would be angle 3, we know that angle is going to stay the same in the equation. So, and that's called the reflexive property. Again, didn't define that. I would definitely look it up. Uh, but that's the reflexive property. And then the final step is, is to go ahead and subtract off angle 3. So notice we got measure of angle 3 on both sides of the equation. So if we subtracted that angle off, we'd be left with the measure of angle 1 equaling the measure of angle 2. And again, the reason for that is subtraction. In a subtraction, you know, if you want to be really correct on this, it's subtraction property of equality. But, you know, we subtracted angle 3 off. And then the final step is we wanted to say that they're equal. Well, since their measures are equal, we know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that is just by the definition of congruence. If angles are equal, they are also congruent. Definition of congruent angles. And there you have it. That is a little longer than I wanted to go, but uh, it gives you everything you'd need to know about vertical, adjacent, and linear pair. See you next time.